Yo, Elliot, I've been loving life recently. Hope you are too. Anyway, I would like to know your opinion on perfumes and deodorants. Have you got any alternatives for men working in corporate structures where the smell of sweet is not appreciated? Much love. So it's interesting. It's funny that you bring this up because last night I was just, I don't know if I was bragging. I was just kind of pointing it out uh, to my wife and my daughters. We were sitting around and, and I, it dawned on me, I don't wear deodorant. I haven't worn deodorant in years. And so I was just teasing with my wife and my daughter. I was like, do I smell bad? Can you guys smell me? And they were like, no, unless you eat curry. Right? Unless I eat curry, you can smell it. But I don't wear deodorant. I stopped wearing deodorant many, many years ago. And I don't wear any perfume or, or colognes or anything of that nature to stamp down my smell. It's an interesting thing, and I'll tell you why in a moment, but it's an interesting thing about human smell and sexuality. Do you know that the body produces smells that, uh, that attract and awaken sexuality in, or, or, or sexual desire? In the opposite sex so the way a man smells right his, his legitimate smell not a polluted smell right a lot of us have polluted smells because we're eating bad food so we smell bad smell polluted but a, but an earthy smell just a human body smell a man's smell turns on a woman she could smell a man and fall in love with him in fact this is interesting i recently read an article about a new study given on women who take birth control pills. So one of the things that we, we've, we've observed in the red pill, uh, manosphere, I like to say patriarchal, father-centered movements, one of the things we've noticed is with contraception and all of its ills, one of which is the pill. And the pill is, it, it chemically changes a woman's bio, or her physiology by having her think that she's pregnant. There's the, whatever, however it works, the hormone goes in the body and the woman thinks that she's pregnant. But when a woman's pregnant, all of her hormones change, everything changes. And one of the things that changes is her ability to smell. And so in this study, in this article, uh, they were talking about how when a woman it meets a man and let's say they're dating and they're getting ready to be married, they want to spend the rest of their life together, but she has been on birth control pills. One of the things that has been, have been observed is that when a woman comes off of her birth control pills and her physiology changes, her attraction to her partner could be completely flipped upside down. And so what this study observed is that when a woman comes off of her birth control pill and she's been on it you know, for years while she was dating a man and she gets married and they want to get pregnant and she comes off of the birth control pill, there have been many instances, many, many instances where when a woman comes off of her birth control pill, she's no longer attracted to her husband. And this study asserted that it had to do with her, her ability to now smell him. And the smell that she gets from him, it was a turnoff, right? And these are like subtle smells. These are, these, it's not like an overt body odor, green smoke coming out of your body. There's subtle pheromones in the body that, uh, that men and women both smell that give uh, an indication about the health of that individual. And of course, you know, sex is really about reproduction and reproduction is about finding the, the healthiest uh, seed and egg that you can find, right? You wanna find the healthiest girl that you can make babies with and this, women the same thing. She wants to find the strongest, healthiest man that she can reproduce with. And, and, and our latent biological sense, our instinct through smelling allows that vetting process to be that much more accurate or that much more in tune with the reality of the individual. So uh, I, all, I bring that all up to sort of point to the fact that human smell isn't just an, is an arbitrary thing, right? It's not just, it, it, it's an indicator to so much of what's going on within the physiology of a person. And so at some point, I don't know, maybe maybe during Roman times when people were taking more baths or something like that, at some point we decided that it would be better to not be able to smell someone. And I remember reading an, a, a, a book by Osho, and Osho was talking about, talking about smell. And he says that um, a part of what has unfolded as a result of, or, or maybe even created the situation where we try to mask our smells was because of attraction. 
And so, or even a woman, so he gives this really weird example, funny example. A woman also gives off smell, when, a certain smell, particularly when she's ovul ovulating and she's ready to have sex. And if she doesn't cover herself up with a lot of perfume and a lot of deodorants and things of that nature, uh, it could be an embarrassing situation if you walk somewhere with your wife, right? So let's say, for example, I'm walking, walking with my wife, and all of a sudden, you know, an attractive man walks by, a man that she's turned on by, and then start going like that. I look over at her, and I'm like, what? Are you, are you spraying sex smell? Are you exuding sex smell, right? Desire? for that man, right? So it would be very embarrassing. It would be very embarrassing if we could smell and decipher the smells as they relate to the pheromones and our human sexuality. So by tampering down the human smell and also by dulling our ability to smell one another, right? The, the sense of smell has been, has been dulled down to, great, to, a, to a great degree. Just think about animals and their ability to smell. I know my dog doesn't do anything. He won't eat anything. He won't go anywhere. Dogs always smell. They smell a person. won't even go to a person until they smell. I'm not saying that we have the heightened sense of smelling that a dog has, but our ability to smell is way more powerful, stronger uh, than, than what we've maybe been trained to perceive, right? We can't, we, can't, we can't sense like we used to sense because our senses have been dulled and in particular smell because it's so primal. Do you smell is the most primal, is the most primal um, uh, sense in, in that it, ha it has the greatest effect on physiological cascades, changes in the body. Smell, smell, smell is powerful. I mean, you could do a whole study on smell. But anyway, so these are all just things that I wanted to bring up as a result of your question and wearing deodorant and stuff like that. I don't wear deodorant. Uh, I stopped wearing deodorant when I realized that many of the deodorants have toxins in them, right? So if you're using antiperspirant, it has aluminum in it. Uh, aluminum is a toxin that can cause everything from dementia, all kinds of brain problems anyway, and cancer and things of this nature, right? So as I started doing more natural living in my early 20s, I refrained from using deodorant. And I had kind of been on and off for many years after that, but maybe for the past two years, I stopped wearing deodorant because I was getting a reaction to it. I was wearing deodorant on, and then my whole whole arm would turn red. And I tried a few different other ones, and I would just it, I would get itchy and red. So I was like, "This is my body telling me that I shouldn't be putting these poisons on me in order to tamp down my smell." It be and and I just accepted that I would smell. I would, I would have a smell. I would have an earthy smell. If I worked out, you might smell sweat, right? Um, so I was teasing my kids. I was asking my, my wife and my kids yesterday. I was like, do you guys smell me? Do I stink? And they're like, no, we have no idea that you don't wear deodorant. Right? They have no idea that I don't wear deodorant. And I venture to say it's because of my health, my healthy practices. If I was eating McDonald's and drinking soda, eating cookies and crackers and cake every day and you know, generally eating the, the sad diet, right? Sh sugar, alcohol, and dairy, right? Or, or the, the, what do they call it? There's a couple of different acronyms for the diet that we eat. But it's all processed food. It's all junk. And your skin is your largest detoxification organ. organ. Did you know that? The skin is the largest detox organ in the body, right? If you ask people like, yo, what's the biggest detox organ in the body? They'll say liver. But it's not. It's your skin. All your body is detox. That's why you get zits when you're a teenager, right? Especially if you're not, you're not drinking enough water. You're 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 eating the wrong foods. You get a lot of zits. My my daughters, luckily, they don't get dip zits like I used to get when I was a kid, because I don't feed them the things that I eat when I was a kid. So my daughters get a little bit of bumps here and there, um, but not a lot of zits. So if you're getting a lot of zits, if you smell really bad, and I'm not saying that to make fun of you. But if you know that you smell raw and raunchy, right, walking around, and you're not wearing deodorant, I would say make an experiment of it. Don't wear deodorant. Don't wear, don't wear perfume. Don't wear uh, cologne. And see how you smell. It will, it will tell you a lot about your health. If you smell really bad when you don't put on deodorant, it means you're not, your digestive system is backed up. 
you're not healthy, you're not doing well. So I would, I would challenge all of you, anybody listening to this, to stop wearing deodorant, stop wearing cologne, stop wearing perfume, and see how that unfolds for you. See if you get an indication as to the level of health that you have or don't have. See if other people, how they respond and react to you. Like I said, smell, smell can be attractive. You don't need chemical perfumes to be attractive. We have pheromones. In fact, I've seen some ads, right, in the back of some like new magazines and stuff when I used to read like uh, Men's Fitness and, uh, you know, Health and Strength, you know, these magazines that are like geared towards men and and men's lifestyle i remember seeing like uh little bottles of pheromones that you could put in your in your cologne it says put these this pheromone in your cologne and it'll make you more attractive to women well your body produces those pheromones your body produces those pheromones and they will either attract or repel and it'll be the real you and it'll be real repel repulsion or real attraction. We gotta get real again, right? And, and smells is one of the ways that we've been faked up. We've been faked up by covering smell and dampening our ability to smell. So to answer your question, you say, I would like to know your opinion on perfumes and deodorants. Have you got any alternatives for men working in corporate structures where smell of sweet is not appreciated? Well, the smell of sweet is not appreciated. Don't wear it. I wouldn't wear it. Right? I don't want to walk around smelling like chemicals, right? That's pretty much what it is. It's chemicals. You're putting chemicals on your body to smell differently than you would normally smell, right? And I even think that some of these things that we put in our skin disrupt our hormones, right? Uh, you know, I'm, you can do some research on this, and I guarantee you'll find some evidence that shows and studies that show that putting cologne on, putting deodorant on has an effect on your heart on your hormones right they even say like uh the air freshener you know the, the room deodorants you plug it in the 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 chemical that come, rises up out of it and then goes into your nose uh affects your testosterone levels right i don't know to what degree but i know that it's been noted that your testosterone levels will drop and estrogen will rise if you're in these spaces where there's a lot of fake smell right there's these room deodorizers and plugins and shit like that right plug it in plug it in uh i remember that theme when i was a kid right they came out with the, that's when i was a kid they came out with the plug in glade plugins he'd plug it in my mom used to have them plug it in and the whole room would smell to, i've gotten to the point in my life today and for many years in fact where i cannot handle those smells those smells are toxic and my body responds to them I, I do not, we do not put any of those plug-in things or room deodorizers. Uh, and even my wife, my wife or my children, they don't wear your, your typical deodorants. I only buy natural deodorants for them. And so uh, one that I like, that I have bought for them and I've used on and on myself, is made out of aloe. It's just straight up aloe. Like there's nothing else in it but aloe. Aloe and something that, that binds it, right? Aloe is a natural smell. If you really want to wear a deodorant, look for like an, al I think Jason's makes an aloe deodorant, right? And if you look at the ingredients in it, it's not, all, it's not that long list of crazy chemicals that you'll see in your typical deodorant. So that's my, that's my opinion and my answer on that. Um, stay away from deodorants. Sorry, guys, that's just my, that's my opinion. I don't wear deodorant. I don't recommend wearing it. Stay away from cologne. I don't think it's very manly. I, Again, I'm a weirdo, right? Uh, I don't think it's very manly to wear fragrances, <laughs> right? Let your fragrance be the smell of man. That's what I wanted. I, I would joke with my wife when I stopped wearing deodorant. I was like, I, I just want to smell like a man. I just want to smell like a man, right? That's it. What, is, what, is, what does a man smell like, right? With all my pheromones and curry smell popping. <laughs> so that's it, man. I hope that helps. That's a rabbit hole you can go down. Very interesting stuff, great question, done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram 
and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.